I want to come back to collaborative growth here. What's a practical example of, of what this could look like for a financial brand, bringing their marketing and sales teams together to co-create, to collaborate, to create value for prospects, even for customers, for members to deepen share of wallet. Maybe it is through local market research, either on the consumer side or the SMB side, maybe both. What's a practical way to think about this? Um, So we have um, a bunch of methodologies that we've developed based on uh, different marketing tactics or marketing channels. Um, The key with collaborative growth though, is that it's really channel and tactic agnostic. The key is just the way you approach it. So if you're gonna write a blog post, don't sit down and write a blog post. Go out and interview five experts on the subject or 50 customers on on the survey, 50 customers on the topic, and then write a blog post with data-backed insights and insights from external experts that people know and trust, right? Um, If you're gonna put together a, a video for YouTube, go interview three people on a subject and splice together their thoughts in a cohesive manner. Right. If you're going to run a survey um, in order to to publish a report, you know, obviously go and get a hundred, few hundred responses before you do that. And so it really doesn't matter what tactic you use. Um, Where I think most marketing teams miss out on uh, is is doing that market research and using that to inform not just what content to produce, but also to inform the actual voice of the content and the perspective of the content. Uh, And so usually we advocate people gathering data from their market and publishing that as a way to do a few things, engage people that you either have as clients or customers, as well as engage prospects, because if you're gonna ask them to complete your survey, that's a way to engage them, way to show them that you actually are um, pursuing knowledge and pursuing insights that you can, they can, they, that they might be interesting to them and that you can share with them. Um, it's also a way to engage them by producing that content, sharing it. A lot of times we'll actually quote some of the contributors. We'll ask them for quotes um, that we can include in the report. So instead of the report being about our perspective, it's the perspective, true perspective of the people that we're, we're surveying. And so I usually recommend that. I think a lot of bigger companies do market research in order to like learn things to make decisions, but this is a different way of doing market research for content marketing that allows people to learn things that are interesting to their audience and then feed that back to them. Um, and that process kind of creates expertise if you think about it, right? Because you're in anyone with any amount of expertise, as long as they're curious and a little creative can come up with a questionnaire, run that survey and all of a sudden, all those people that took that survey, look at that one person that put it together and say, oh, this person has expertise in that subject. The, so it's a way of creating expertise. It's interesting. You're talking about just going out and having conversations with the marketplace. Yes. I often find that marketing teams have not done that before or they don't do it. It's that systematized or operationalized. In fact, because I think of things on a 90 day cycle and banking on change, I'm writing around the 90 day growth methodology. And if you made a commitment to focus on one area, um, maybe it's around a product line, maybe it's around a particular market segment and going out and having these conversations, running these surveys, doing these interviews, I think it's also doing something very interesting is coming back to this idea of narrative and and story, um, playing the role of the helpful guide, you're inviting the market to become a part of the story. They're no longer a, um, observing the, the movie they're in the movie now. That's right. That's right. And what, what are the mindsets that are needed for this? Because when I think about particularly within financial services, when you recommend doing something quote unquote new and progressive, um, yeah. it's often yeah. met with concern. It's really yeah. just, it's fear of the unknown, but deeper than that, it's more of a mindset perspective. You and I think we're even, you know, talking the other day on LinkedIn about just we're, we both are naturally curious. We both have growth mindsets. I think it's just ingrained in our, in our yeah, DNA abundance mentality. Right. Yep. But what are the mindsets uh, needed for collaborative growth? Yeah, I, I laughed when you said that this is new and what'd you say? New and progressive. 
progressive. <laughs> as if running surveys and creating content was new and progressive. But I hear you. I get that it's not part of the playbook for tr more traditional businesses that have been around for a long time. Um, yeah. Um, so your your question though was was what like how mindset? You, like what are the well, mindsets that are needed? To, to, to establish the behaviors and the habits. Yeah, I guess first you got to be a little bold, maybe, um, and, and say, hey, we're going to do something a little different this quarter. Um, and we're going to talk to customers. <laughs> 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 Woo, mind blown. Um, right. And that'll inform our marketing strategy instead of like, hey, we got this promotion for this new product that we randomly drew out of a hat. Right. Um, this quarter, or the CEO said, let's do mortgages now. Right. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so I think you're crazy. Go out and talk to customers. You can still do it on mortgages if you want or home improvement loans or whatever you want, but but uh, pick something and go talk to 50 customers or 50 prospects or 50 people in your market. I was talking with Derek uh, Sutton about this over at Auto Books, and he was actually, you know, just go talk to 10 people who opened an account in the last month and why they opened the account, where they come from, what, what were right. they what were they running away from and what are they running towards, you know, wh yeah. why, why you? So, yeah. not, like you said, we not progressive. I mean, this is natural for a lot of other verticals, but it's just not one that I see specifically within FinServe right now. Got you. Yeah. So to answer your question on the mindset, I think go back to what I originally said in the very beginning of the podcast, you have to be open to the fact that you don't have all the answers and that you'll go learn something from someone if you talk to them. Mm. Um, and that will change. It may, may change your tweak your perspective 2%. But you're still going to learn something. You got to be open to it, right? You got to seek that knowledge. I think that's the first mindset. The sec the second mindset is that you kind of have to be willing to publish stories and share stories about your customers and about your prospects, not about your products, mm. uh, right? Because if you're just talking about your products all day, like you're not differentiating yourself. But if you talk about the stories of how you helped a customer or data about you know, home renovation trends in your area, um, like you're going to get people interested in that. It's going to be much more interesting and it's still related to your products, of course. Um, I, this could also expand into PR opportunities at a local market level. Yes. And then that would then perhaps yield to interviews, other podcasts. I mean, and there's, it's, yes. it's almost like a flywheel. It seems like once you get this going, then it opens up new opportunities and new opportunities. Yeah, so we're obviously doing this to market our own business. I literally booked seven podcasts last week. Now, some of them I had like pushed off uh, because I was just too overwhelmed to do them at the time. But like, yes, there's always those opportunities. And the other reason to do this is actually SEO. Mm. So what Google wants, if you go go read their guidelines, they will tell you that they want data-backed content, content that's backed by data, has data in it. They want real stories, original stories, not fabricated, not how to's. And they want multiple perspectives from multiple people. If you read their guidelines, you will literally see that I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but you will literally see that that's in the guidelines. And so if you produce content like that, that has data that you gathered, original data, and it has quotes from other people, you are more likely to rank. The other reason to do it for SEO is that People actually link to that. They'll cite that data, C-I-T-E, mm. cite that data because you're the original source of that insight, right? Um, we're in the middle of doing a survey. Uh, I might get these numbers wrong, so don't quote me, um, on business outlooks. Um, and we've only gotten, I think, like 80 some people to respond so far. But one of the questions we asked them is, is your marketing budget bigger or smaller and by how much? And only 34%, I think 34% had a um, higher budget. The second question we asked is, are your goals more aggressive this year or higher or lower? 67% have more aggressive, higher targets, right? Bigger so goals, smaller budget. Are operating either with a lower or the same budget. A lot of them are lower. And 67% have a higher expectations, higher goals. And so Imagine how many people are going to cite that once we actually publish it, right? We're going to have a few hundred people to respond to that. And I don't know if those numbers will hold up, but I guess they, my guess they, is they will. And there'll be people citing that. It's really good data. I don't know of anyone else that's gathered that those two stats together. No. Uh, and as a result of, we've done this 1400 times, by the way, we've crowdsourced content and run surveys and written 1400 articles as a result of doing this process for over the last six years. As a result of doing that, um, our domain authority from an SEO perspective is much higher than our competitors 
because all that content attracts links because people cite our data. Um, they're constantly linking to the data and that sends a signal to Google that our content is has more authority than our competitors' content. Getting those third party, uh, that's allowed third us party to links. Get, and our product page is ranking well, right? And capturing leads as, as a result of that. So um, so doing this, we're, this kind of content will actually lead to better SEO results as well.